All right, so Elon Musk is under fire for allowing Holocaust denialism to run rampant on Twitter. Let me just give you an example of what this looks like. Uh, this is Jake Shields. He has grown a, quite a large audience since um, the war in Gaza, and he has been speaking up against the Israelis quite a bit, but now he has delved into talking about the Holocaust. This is one of the posts. He says, I've done a little digging and got to the, oh, sorry, this is, he says, these are the actual photos from the gas chambers in Auschwitz death camp, the Nazi technology was extremely advanced and decades ahead of modern gas chambers. So he's sort of, you know, he's being facetious on this. These are wooden doors with windows. This is something that has been discussed often in um, Holocaust denialism communities where they say, how could these possibly be gas chambers when these are wooden doors and these are windows? Um, and then Jake clarifies, and that's what I was reading here, but this is the clarification here. He says, um, I've done a little digging and I've gotten to the bottom of why they have wooden doors. The gas chamber at Auschwitz was never actually a gas chamber. It was built in the 1950s by Soviets to look like they assumed it would look. I'm sure they will add some community note, but this is actually the official story. So um, first of all, I just want to say that I, whenever, whenever there is denialism, attached to any group. So vaccine denialism, moon landing denier, you know, so whenever you add denier, like moon landing denier, Holocaust denier, vaccine denier, climate change denier, I'm always skeptical of, of anybody that adds denier to anything. I think we should be allowed to question absolutely everything. And we should be allowed to look into absolutely everything. And it shouldn't come with some sort of conspiracy theory label. It instead should be met with it's healthy. It's 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 a healthy part of growth, exploration, learning to be questioning everything, including atrocities that happen and questioning whether or not they really happen the way that victims claim that they happen. I mean, we do this in court on a regular basis, right? We were supposed to have uh, innocent until proven guilty, and you're supposed to question what the victims are saying. So I think, you know, we, 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 are, we are also told, by the way, when you go to the doctor, you should get a second opinion. Although these days, I'm not sure if people actually believe that anymore. But th that is, we're supposed to have healthy skepticism. So any denialism, I'm not really fond of this word at all. I just want to put that out there. But I want to bring up... Um, Really, the the issue that we're seeing with Holocaust denialism right now, and the and the uh, massive uprise of this on Twitter right now is a reaction. Whether whatever you think about the Holocaust, whether you're somebody that questions the entire narrative or some of the narrative, or um, you don't question it at all, and you think that it's ter it, it's her it horrific if people question the Holocaust, wherever you stand on it, it really. It's kind of a moot point on this. The point being that this is expected. This is expected when the Israelis have lied time and time and time again. And they not only do they lie, but any time they've been caught lying or they're accused of lying, they say, this is akin to Holocaust denialism. You don't believe in the 40 beheaded baby babies and you are a Holocaust denier. This is just like Holocaust denialism. Anything they said, was it's it's just equated to this all the time. So of course people are going to naturally question their narrative, and then when their narrative is proven false, of course people are they're going to say, well then now we have to start questioning the Holocaust because you've said that questioning this would be akin to Holocaust denialism. Turns out you lied. So what else have you been lying about? That is a natural human reaction to the Israelis lying over and over again. In fact, if I were Jewish, I would be livid. At Israel, I'd be denouncing Israel for this very reason, for the fact that they're delegitimizing absolutely every claim that Jewish people have made throughout history. Now, people are questioning everything, which, by the way, they should. I think they should question things. I'm totally fine with that. But they're questioning things more than they normally would, and sometimes in a hostile way, in ways that might be taken as you're not just being healthy in your skepticism and questioning whether or not these events happen because you really truly want to learn, but you're questioning and you're skeptical because you're angry. You're angry at this, at the, the Jewish state, right? Israel claims itself to be the Jewish nation for all Jewish people. And now you're questioning the word of Jewish people because you can legitimately question the word of, of Israelis. Um, for example, here is a tweet by Keith Woods where he says here, let me just 
pull this up for you full screen. And he says, in the past few months, I've seen Jewish Zionists say questioning 40 beheaded babies is Holocaust denial. Free Palestine is anti-Semitic. And pointing out that Israel killed aid workers is blood libel. The anti-Semitism hoax is finished. You can't support the biggest televised slaughter in history and shut down all criticism of it with the word hate. And that's exactly right. That is what people are seeing is that, you know, Ben Shapiro comes out about the seven world um, central kitchen workers who were slaughtered. And he says, oh, it's blood libel. It's blood libel to say that uh, that that Israel did this on purpose, that they targeted these these workers when obviously it they obviously it wasn't. Oops, we dropped a bomb in the wrong spot. It was, oh, we targeted them. Then they they got into another car. They drove a little ways longer. We targeted them again. Their car was clearly marked. They were they told the IDF in advance exactly where they were going to be. I mean, there's they were absolutely targeted. There's just no other way to explain that. And if they were to be a an individual, if this weren't war and they were an individual and they had to go to war and they had to explain, or, sorry, they were individual and they had to go to court and explain how they shot at the vehicle. The victim got out, got another vehicle. They continued to shoot them. They got out of that vehicle. They got into another vehicle. They continued to shoot them. How that's not homicide. They would have to explain that in court and they would lose in court. That that wasn't just oops, mistaken manslaughter or self-defense. That was absolute homicide. And that is what Israel is engaged in. But if you question it and if you question whether or not those aid workers were targeted, you are committing now blood libel, which blood libel comes from the um, the rumor a long time ago that Jewish people would uh, sacrifice or eat Christian babies. You know, that was blood libel. And now everything's blood libel, even though that had a very specific, very specific meaning. Everything is Holocaust denial even though that has a very specific meaning. So uh, we are seeing a rise of Holocaust questioning, Holocaust um, skepticism. Uh, for me personally, I think, of course, there's some exaggeration. I think with the, you know, I'm, I, I do think, of course, there's some exaggeration to the stories. Um, do, do I, there was absolutely 100% an atrocity that was committed against the Jewish people during World War II. I think that's undeniable. We've seen the photograph. We have photographic evidence. We have eyewitnesses. We've got logs. The Germans kept great records. We know that they committed an, a horrible, horrible atrocity against the Jewish people and any other group of people they deem to be undesirable, the Jewish people being uh, the top of that list. Now, were the numbers inflated? Was it six million? I don't know. Was it, you know, uh, did they turn Jewish people into lampshades and soap? I think that's been debunked, right? There's there's things that I think have been exaggerated, but that is not done by just the Jewish people. That's done by the victors and the victims. And that happens in every single war that happens in just everyday life. Whenever there's a hero, the story kind of gets inflated, right? Because the hero wants to sound more like a hero than they really were. The victim, uh, people want to find out what horrible thing happened to you. And then they they ask them to tell the story and they kind of prod it and poke it into a way where, of course, it exaggerates a bit. To what level? It depends. Sometimes things are grossly grossly exaggerated. Sometimes they're just minimally exaggerated. But of course, history is written by the victors. And so, yes, I, I think that if you're being a healthy, skeptical, logical person, you would read the history books and know that uh, it makes us look great as victors that saved the Jews from this horrible Holocaust if it's slightly exaggerated. It makes the Jews look more victimized if the victimization was horrific, more maybe more horrific than it. It was, it was really horrific, though. I, I don't think that that's really, truly disputed. Um, but but then, you know, I'm probably going to be called a Holocaust denier for even just having a logical outlook of how history is written, how we see just things even unfold in everyday life on an individual basis and and on larger scales, of course, you know, and we see this with. Any war that we've gone in and won, it's, oh, it's, we were so great. We saved humanity from utter destruction. And if it weren't for us, everything, you know, that, and that's, that's the narrative that happens. So, um, yeah, but obviously right now, there's obviously going to be a massive rise in, in, uh, in questioning narratives that are coming from Israelis and from Jewish people in general. Because so many Jewish people support Israel. This is 
Again, if I were Jewish, I would, in which many, many, look, the, the loudest voices I know against Israel are Jewish people. Uh, unfortunately, they're few and far between. And that is a sad truth. There should be more outrage by the Jewish people against the state of Israel for committing these crimes in their name, claiming to be a country for them, um, claiming that anything that is questioned is blood libel and Holocaust denial. And all. I mean, they're creating anti-Semitism. Israel is creating hate and anti-Semitism. People look at what Israel's doing. It's obviously a genocide. It's obviously horrific. And people are now hating Israel. Since Israel says they are the nation of Jews for Jews by Jews, then people start to hate Jews. That creates the anti-Semitism is absolutely on the rise. It is absolutely dangerous. It is it's and it's circular, right? Because Israel says we are here as a nation created in case there's such horrible anti-Semitism that Jews have to flee, and this will be the safe place where they can flee. And during World War II, during the Holocaust, there was no safe place. Now there's a safe place, quasi-safe, uh, even though they then say, but we're surrounded by en enemies and everybody wants to wipe us off the face of the earth. So they say, here we are, a home for Jews, where Jews can be safe. That has then created a rise in anti-Semitism as they have behaved in atrocious ways. Then people are starting to question the loyalty of many American Jews, rightfully, in my opinion, questioning their loyalty when they so obviously are, are way more uh, protective and outspoken and, you know, like look at Ben Shapiro, who criticizes the United States endlessly, but never criticizes Israel. Have you ever heard a single criticism of Israel come out of Ben Shapiro's mouth? Yet you will hear numerous criticisms of the United States. And what happens? You can, you can work for the Daily Wire and criticize the United States till you're blue in the face, but you cannot criticize Israel and keep your job. That's what Candace Owens learned. So people are rightfully looking at people like Ben Shapiro, who is an American citizen, and wondering, are you really, though, or are you actually uh, really a, an agent for the state of Israel pretending and masquerading as an American citizen, and, and maybe you should be living somewhere else, or maybe you should at least be labeled, uh, outright labeled. I mean, look, if people working for RT are being labeled as Russian state media, then why aren't people like Ben Shapiro being labeled as Israeli state media. Uh, you know, that, that is something that, so, so people are starting to question the loyalty of Jews. People are starting to question the, the honesty of Jews. People are starting to question, um, you know, these, these, the, the history of Jews, all of these things are being questioned. It's a natural reaction from the atrocities that Israel's creating and committing in Palestine and it, of course it's on the rise. Of course it's on the rise. Some of it's healthy skepticism. Some of it is just anger and that anger manifesting in terrible ways. And it could manifest to a point of really horrific anti-Semitism, which maybe is Israel's goal because they are trying to build a nation that is majority Jew. And right now, if they were to force to be a one state with and giving all citizen, all the Palestinian citizenship, it would be 50-50. They would lose their Jewish character. They would no longer be a Jewish nation. But if you can create anti-Semitism around the world and get Jews to want to flee to the one safe place that you've created for them, and you dominate the region, you flood it in with population, then uh, you end up with the Jewish nation, even if you give all the Palestinians citizenship. If you have 80% um, Jews and 20% Palestinians, then there's no real threat to the Jewish character of your nation. Same thing that's like the Christian character of the United States. And that could be the goal. Is that the goal? Again, healthy skepticism, healthy questioning, ask the questions. Is that what Israel's trying to do? Are they trying to fear monger people and to where they run off and help build the state of Israel as they've so, uh, they're absolutely hell bent on building the state of Israel. They've made that clear and they've somehow gotten our government to help in that by giving them endless amounts of money year after year, not only in wartime, but in peacetime as well, claiming to constantly be in wartime. American politicians can't speak out against Israel. You can't even be in media and speak out against Israel. I mean, um, they've, they've basically coerced us somehow, one way or the other, into building a nation for them. Not our nation, but their nation. I just want to play this clip for you. This is Andrew Schultz. He's a comedian, popular comedian. He called out Ben Shapiro, and he's kind of reiterating also what I'm saying here to you. 
Uh, check this out. He makes the argument for censorship. He calls it something else. Yeah, I forget the term I have it in my phone. But he, I don't even think he's using the term right. But he's basically like, there's a window of ideas we accept. Yes. And we accept ideas between this, uh, this, I guess this is, if I get window, you're looking like this. So we accept ideas between here and here. And anything outside of that window, well, you're fireable. That's censorship. What? But yeah. he's acting as if this is like, a justified reason for firing people when you built your identity and platform off of no censorship and freedom of yes, speech and yeah. facts don't care about your feelings and all this shit. It's also funny that that window happens to end where his beliefs end. I am Isn't that interesting? You would say well, that. not being pro-Israel, that's where the window ends. That's what? also your specific personal belief. What? So, I just so don't you see. you can't have an opinion on your platform that is not pro a country that is not ours? Hmm. Yeah. Wait a minute. It's crazy. I wish So wait, is I the Daily the Wire an American media platform or is it an Israeli Ooh. media platform? <laughs> I'm just asking. This guy's cooking. This guy's I'm just asking. Going. Get that, yeah, get that, get I'm just, no. If, if the Duh. rule is, I'm just saying, if the cooking. rule is you cannot be critical because he has no problem being very critical of America. Yep. It's sure. critical of the left in America. Left sure. is half the country. That's you have half. no problem eviscerating half That's of the, the country. That's the current power in, party in power. But you can't criticize Israel as a country. That's just another country. Unless you're saying, and you're clearly admitting that the Daily Wire is an arm of the Israeli, I guess, media or propaganda machine. For, wait, is that? Oof. Are you manipulating the, the religious right in America? Are you manipulating Ooh. the right-wing conservatives in America and Stop selling them shit. country western movies and putting on your little cowboy hat and <laughs> fake moving to Nashville so that you could take all their money and then in the process restricting free speech, one of the core tenets of the American identity? Ben, Ben, Ben. Oof. Benjamin, Benjamin. What is happening? <laughs> There's trouble in paradise. <laughs> <laughs>